Hey guys, Sam at Blackman Cycle. Today we're going over operation of the CF Moto C Force 500. This is one of the best selling quads that we have here at the moment, and we're loaded up with inventory. So, uh, just want to touch on all the basic controls, all the different features of this machine. So, these guys are four wheel drive, do have a differential lock. Uh, to engage the four wheel drive, you're going to click this red button in. Once we are in four wheel drive, you can flip the switch over, yellow button out will lock the front differential. Uh, front differential being locked, you will lose power steering, but you will gain quite a bit more traction. That's a pretty situational thing. Don't use it all the time, just when you're stuck and you need to get out. General driving, we're gonna put it back into two wheel drive. Obviously we have our throttle on the right hand side with a throttle limit screw. If we run this screw in, that will limit how far you can open this throttle in case we got younger kids operating this, somebody that doesn't want quite the speed that this thing offers. Uh, handbrake is on the right side. It is linked with our foot brake. So both handbrake and foot brake will operate the brakes on all four wheels. If I kick this parking brake lever out, that will keep the brake lever engaged. Machine's not gonna rock on us. On the left side, a couple different controls here. Obviously you have your headlight switch, position down all the way is your parking lights, no lights, low beam, high beam. Green button does operate the starter. We wanna make sure we keep gear in park hand or foot on the brake when we start the machine. Kill switch needs to be pressed to the right. If we need to shut the machine down for any reason, flick the kill switch to the left, it will shut it off. CF motors do come with a horn to let people know you're coming. And then we have our winch controls here. So you see we have out and we have in. Just wanna to touch on a couple features with operating the winch. As you're standing in front of the machine on the right side, we have the winch clutch. We can twist this knob here and release the winch clutch. Now we're in free spool, I can grab onto the tab, walk it out, attach it to whatever I need. We're gonna flip the clutch back, keeping my fingers away from any pinch points here, away from this steel cable that may prick you. We're gonna wind the winch in. And then we always wanna make sure we stop before we get too tight, that way that drum doesn't keep winding and snap the cable. Um, also, always want to make sure that you keep tension on the winch. That way the cable doesn't wrap around itself and get tangled up in the drum. You won't be able to retract it. On the back side of the left-hand switch housing, we have this funky looking trigger switch. This is your reverse override. So these machines have a safety feature. They are speed limited in reverse. If you hold that trigger while backing up, it will give you full speed and full power in case you need it. We have 12 volt power outlets and USB power outlets. You want to charge your phone, charge your GPS, what have you. We got two plugs there for that. Gear selector is on the left hand side. We have park, reverse, neutral, high and low. Gear selection is very important on these things. Uh, if you're doing anything slow speed, high load, climbing hills, loading onto a trailer, pushing a snow plow, want to make sure we're in low gear so we do not slip the belt. Anything faster than that, you can stop put the machine in high gear and get quite a bit more speed out of it. We want to make sure that we're fully stopped before we change gears. We want to make sure we're not overloading the belt, overloading the transmission by being in the incorrect gear. One of the other nice features that these have is there is actually a park lock here. So if I take out my key, pull back the rubber cover, insert the key and twist, that will lock this machine in park. That way nobody can throw it in neutral and walk away with it. A couple maintenance features with this machine. Access panel on the left hand side. If I stick my hand behind the panel and pull forward, here we have our oil filter, here we have our dipstick. As you notice, there are some rubber grommets here. We wanna make sure that those grommets stay firmly attached and that cover goes back on smoothly. Underneath the seat, if I take my hand and pull the lever here, seat comes off, we have battery and we have our air filter. There's a couple metal tabs we can flip back to access our air filter and make sure that's clean and free of debris. When reattaching the seat, make sure that it fully engages, make sure that your tab is actually hooked and seat doesn't come flying off. In the rear, we have a small storage compartment. If I pull this rubber tab, flip it down, we got a decent amount of space in here, tool kit, any other storage that you need. And again, make sure that that's firmly reattached. And there's also a two inch receiver on the rear here. It'll take any standard hitch. If you wanna pull a trailer with the machine, anything like that, you can do so. Last thing would just be general functions of the gauge. If I power the machine on, we can see we got a couple different functions here. We do have fuel gauge on the left, temperature gauge on the right. 
The bottom is our odometer, speedometer, clock, and then our four-wheel drive indicator. So you can see as I engage four-wheel drive, we hear it engage. We got four wheels lit up on the screen. If I lock the front differential, we get an X that lets me know power steering is not active and our differential is locked. That about covers it, guys. These machines are fairly simple to operate. If you have any other questions, give us a call, 610-965-9865.